Going carp fishing in England is something I've wanted to do for a long time, but there's two problems. How do you convince your wife to go, and how do you get all your gear on the plane? Well, this place was gorgeous, and my wife loved it, and they rented all the gear. The bivvies, the bed chairs, the rod pods, the alarms, and they had a little tackle shop on site so you could get bait and other little things. And about two miles down the road is the Tackle Den, which is an awesome carp fishing tackle shop. Tons of gear, tons of kit. And unlike in America where I have to get everything online, I could go there and feel it and see it and see all the new stuff and try it out and talk to uh, professionals about it. It was just great to be able to be in a tackle shop. And I needed it because the weather was hot and all those carp were high up in the water and weren't biting on the bottom. So I went down to the tackle shop and picked myself up some zig bugs and got these ESP zig bugs. Great for fishing for carp uh, on the surface, and that's exactly what I needed. So I rigged up a zig rig, uh, casted it out to a bunch of carp that were swimming around in front of my swim. And it, you could just see them right there, right on the surface, and it took about 18 minutes to get my first hookup. You got it? And that's okay. Here, let me get this. Tangled. It's tangled? That's okay. We'll get it untangled. Yeah. Step up, Tom. Step up. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. So you got this? Yeah. All right, Tommy. Show me what you got. Yeah. Oh, right. My marker float. Of course. Okay. All right. We'll just deal with it. Come on, Tommy. Think you can net him? You need my help. I need here. You can do this, Tom. Okay. Very good. There. You got him, Tom. <laughs> you got. Him. Well, good job, Tommy. He will oh. keep the big fish. He will keep the big fish. Yeah, look at that. He held that zig bug. Hi, not scared. Looks like he's about 21, 21 and change. Hey, Tommy, you want to look at this? This is. This uh, is a. <gasps> oh, this is a. Hey, Tom, over here. Sit down. This sit down. Let's see. We're gonna take and they've got this little like iodine antiseptic here. Gonna spray it on his little cut. You got here? Okay. Ready? Okay. Stand right here. Right here, Tom. Okay. Now lower him in the push. Push him in the water. Okay, like that. And go like this. See? There you go. Oh, he's swimming. He's swimming away. That night, I got another hit on the same zig bug. Woke up, started fighting a fish, and uh, succeeded in dropping my Delcom TXI receiver in the water in the middle of the night and while trying to fight the fish. And I pulled it out and managed to keep the fish on and got everything. Uh, taken care of but it was a it was a bit of a circus it was uh i was so groggy and out of it i was afraid i was gonna accidentally step off into the water but uh got him in the net and did an okay job uh and it was a nice uh, 17 pounder another another beautiful dark common on a zig bug I gotta tell you, I'm a huge fan of those Delcoms. That TXI receiver was underwater for about three or four minutes. Shook all the water out of it, put the battery back in, turned on. As soon as it dried out, it was fine. I love those bite alarms for two reasons. First, it allows you to get some sleep while you're fishing at night. And second, it allows you to play with your family and pay attention to your kids while you're fishing instead of just staring at your rods.
one of our favorite side trips uh, that we took on this vacation was to Carfilly Castle in Wales. Uh, Becca really wanted to see this cool castle she found online and so it was about a one or two hour drive over to Wales and we just had a ball. We even stopped to get one of my favorite foods on the way, fish and chips. If you're ever in the UK, get fish and chips. So we went and got fish and chips in Wales and we got a small order of fries. <laughs> Okay, and I foolishly ordered the large fish. So, um, yeah, there we emptied the sea. The great potato famine is over, folks. All right. Now I know you're thinking I've had fried fish before. It's not that great. That's because you ate it in the U.S. and it was garbage. So when you go to the U.K get real fish and chips from a store that sells just fish and chips. Now, Carfilly Castle was awesome. It was uh, just one of the coolest things we saw. It's the second biggest castle in the UK. It uh, was built in the 13th century. It was attacked three times. It has never fallen. It's got everything you would hope to see in a castle, including huge moats with giant 20-pound carp swimming in them. Loved it. Absolutely awesome. Since we were in Wales, I decided to run through the town and find myself a bookstore because I have this awesome tradition that anytime me and Becca travel overseas, we buy kids books from that country and we try to find kids books in that language. So since we were in the UK, we got a British book and since we were in Wales, we got a couple kids books in Welsh. And then of course, you got to buy more car fishing magazines because you know that's what we do. Even managed to pick up some little toy knights for the boys and uh, they loved them. Wales really is a, like a whole other country and they've got their own language, people speak Welsh, the signs are all in English and Welsh and it really has its own unique culture and I was really glad that on this trip to the UK I got a chance to go to Wales and it was, we just had a ball and the, the castles were absolutely amazing. So if you ever wanted to see a medieval castle, go to Wales, do a road trip, it's totally worth it. And the drive is absolutely awesome too. You know, those back roads are just uh, a kick in the pants to drive through. On our last full free day in England, we decided to go back to Bybury and do a little trout fishing. Um, there's a great little trout farm there and it's just an awesome little village. So, you know, we just loved going back. 
Um, it's got old churches. It's got great little cottages, little tea gardens and pubs, and and uh, it's just a great place to go. Uh, it's crawling with tourists, but you know what? It's it's awesome. And uh, I'd promised Tommy that I would take him um, to do some fishing because he he really wanted to do that, and and so we went back to go check it out. And it was a little rainy. It was the only rainy day we had in England. It was it was uh, it was pretty awesome. So the trout farms in Bybury are, are just absolutely gorgeous. You pay an entrance fee and you can feed the trout or just look around if you want. Or you can go and, and catch your own. And it's kind of like pick your own apples only with animals instead of fruit. You go and uh, you, you get the gear and everything and you don't have to rent it. It, you just go in there and catch your trout and then you pay per the pound for whatever you catch and you can't release it. You have to keep whatever you catch. There's also a little play set there. So Tommy played on the, the, the play set and had a ball doing that. And they have barbecues and picnic areas with all the barbecue supplies like charcoal and utensils and stuff. So you can barbecue your fish right there if you want to. It was absolutely a great place. And if you like fresh trout, you got to go here. Great! It's a beautiful rainbow trout. Yeah, but it has gills and neck. It, ha it has gills and mouth. It has a gills and mouth. That's right. Yeah. This. You like that, Tom? <laughs> yeah. Hold them up real high. Yeah. That's a big trout. Good yeah. job. Yeah. We'll put back in the bucket. Mom, sure. Put them in the. You can put them in the bucket. Yeah. Why don't you put them in the bucket for me? Yeah. Good job. Yeah, follow Grandpa. The trout farm in Bybury also has everything you need to clean what you catch. And uh, they've got a pair of scissors there, and it's really easy to clean a trout with a pair of scissors. You just kind of cut its throat, you go down the belly, and you pull out all the guts. Um, really simple. Um, just kind of get in there, get your hands dirty. They have a bucket to chuck everything in and, and just pull everything out that you don't want to put in your mouth. And uh, once you got uh, most little dangly bits and odds and ends uh, pulled out, go and, and clip the, the throat. And you want to clip down through the gills all the way to the skull at the base of the throat between the pectoral fins and right underneath the chin. And you clip those two parts and that separates the vast majority of the gills. And so it's barely connected and you just reach in there and you can pop, pull out all the gills. And then you've got all the guts out or most of the guts out you've got the gills and you just make sure you get all those little bits out and then it tears out pretty easy and uh, if you need use the scissors to kind of clean up up the a few few little dangly bits that didn't tear out cleanly and it works really well and if you're not handy with a fillet knife this is a great alternative and it's a little bit safer too um, and you can get in there and this one's got eggs that got all over and there's this uh, vein that runs along the, the spine just put your thumb down in there and push it up and shove out all that blood and, and the vein out and uh, get that out there and use the water rinse it off um, and it, it works works really easy it's uh, it doesn't have to be a precise job too because if you miss a little bits here and there it's just going to come out after you cook it 
And so, you know, it's not a it's not a big deal. It doesn't have to be exactly precise. Then just go and cut off the pectal fins. And uh, that's it. You're good to go. All right? And you've got this beautifully uh, clean trout. Just takes a few seconds with a pair of kitchen shears. And that's it. And that's enough to feed four adults right there. That's a great fish. So um, it's nice. They have bags right there. So you can uh, take everything you catch and double bag it, put it in your car, take it home. And a couple hours later, we're cooking fresh trout. And what I did is there was a bunch of fresh garden sage and mint growing right there on the, in the woods around the property. So I just took some butter and brown sugar and fresh uh, herbs that I found around the property and just shoved it all around the trout, wrapped it in tin foil, baked it, and then you just pull the skull and the bones out, comes out in one good go. It's absolutely awesome. And the last uh, day, the uh, owner, uh, Mike, came out and, and uh, he uh, showed me some, a few tips and, and uh, uh, we got out the bait boat and he really showed me his favorite spots and he was just great. You know, you could just tell he really wanted each one of his guests to have a great time and to catch lots of fish. And uh, hardly a day went by that he didn't stop by and ask how I was doing and, and give me tips and advice if I wanted it to help me try to catch more fish. And, and he put me right on a few spots and really uh, worked hard to try to, to get me another fish or two this uh, last day. And, and it was just really a nice environment and it was fun to uh, have all that gear there for rent since I couldn't bring my own and it was just a really great experience just good people beautiful location good fishing it was it was really nice and it rained the last day and we had a beautiful full arc rainbow right over my spot and uh, while I didn't catch anything that last day I had no regrets and it was a little sad finally pulling up my rods and going home uh, but I had lots of extra fishing gear that I bought in the UK to bring home. And uh, so we had a good time. And, and uh, on our way to Heathrow, we packed everything up and we stopped in the town of Windsor and did some last minute shopping and sightseeing. And Windsor Castle was there and it was the Queen's birthday. So it was all decked out in decorations. And uh, we bought souvenirs for family back home and harassed wildlife and waterfowl and just had a great time. And we had so much fun on this trip and it was just a great combination of family and fishing and and we're just never going to forget it it was a great time <music> so much fun on this trip and Willow will never forget it. it wasn't our first trip to England and hopefully it won't be our last. If you like that video check out some of our other great videos including part one of our trip to England and my shark fishing trip down to Panama City Beach Florida. If you want to see more great videos every week click subscribe and if you'd like to see links to more information about what we did on this trip check the description and don't forget to leave your comments and click like. Thanks for watching.